Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to give you guys an update video of the trap sin that we've been playing. I would have made one kind of early on, but the levels really breeze, like kind of just zoom really fast in Median Exile. So I'm level 109 right now. Uh, I'll give you guys kind of an update of how to level the character. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a game. We're going to be in hell just to show you, but before I actually start and get into it, I want to give you guys some leveling tips. So the first thing to state is this is going to be my trap assassin that I'm playing. Um, I haven't done any trading on the character, nor do I usually do trading in Median Excel because I have no clue what anything is worth. Uh, at the most, in terms of trading, usually like we trade um, like set items for other set items, or sacred uniques for other sacred uniques, or if you're going to craft your gear, then basically shrines for shrines, where if you don't know what shrines are and you're familiar with Path of Exile, it's basically like an essence, so you craft with a guaranteed stat. But anyway, that's all for later. So, to start off leveling the character, um, to explain kind of what you're going to do, is you are going to be using Incineration Trap, which is pretty much going to be your main trap throughout the entirety of the game. It is not super good for single target, very, very good for AoE. Um, the area effect on it, on it does scale per base level, which is really, really, really good. So an example uh, at where I'm at right now, I'll show you how big the AoE is. So these mobs are over here, right? I'm going to place this. Let's get some more. Can we get some more mobs? Okay, here we go. Here's another pack plus here. So basically, you can group mobs up, put down your trap, put down your support trap, and that pretty much anything that comes, like this guy is tiny but out of range. If I move over here, I'll probably walk forward. You can see, so it hits all the way to there, right? Um, tiny bit out of range there. Super, super awesome trap. You can only have one of them down at the moment, but that pretty much covers your AoE clear. So um, I max subterfuge. It's very really it's not like super good damage killing at the beginning uh, I may remove points out of it right now but for now so far like damage wise it's great I don't really have anything else to do with the points um, incineration trap like I said this is our main damage skill so you're gonna max that uh, shockwave trap I found that this trap was complete utter shit while leveling I didn't like using it because it took so much MP and even at the point of where I'm at now it feels clunky Incineration trap instantly applies damage, so I put it down. The mobs are already like they're dead, right? The problem with this trap is you place it and you have to wait, and then it goes off. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with the wait time except for the fact that like monsters are punching you in the face and stuff like that, and Assassin has terrible survivability at the beginning. But I did notice that Shockwave trap does feel pretty okay once you get some energy regen. Uh, you put some mono region MOs on your accessories, and overall it's much better single target than Incineration Trap. I don't really like using it, but to be fair, it is our best single target. Next up is Catalyst Trap, or basically it's a support trap. You're just going to put it down every, pretty much every 10 seconds. Um, it'll create this little area around it that uh, any trap that's inside it when, it when it is casting is literally like five times damage. It won't be like that at the beginning, but as you scale it up, you'll notice that the total damage will scale. Uh, it also slows monsters in it, which is nice. The next one that you don't get until like 96 or something is Artifice Mastery. This you will be maxing out 100%. This is what makes your character actually survive. Uh, what this does is, is you get a 50% block chance for 10 points and spell block while you are wielding two claws and you're not walking or you're not running. That sounds really shit at the beginning because it says while you're not walking and while you're not running, but at the same time, if you get hit and you block, you have a block frame. I'm pretty sure that during that block frame, you're tagged as standing still, which means you're probably going to be blocking the next attack. So honestly, ignore the part where it says does not work while walking or running, because for most people, especially inexperienced players like myself, this will be a lifesaver for you because of the way it works. So pretty much up until 96, you're gonna feel really, really squishy on this character. And it has nothing to do with the build. It's just the way Assassin is. Um, around the time that I got Artifice Mastery is when I started maxing Perfect Being. At first I was putting like, you know, five, five, six points or so, uh, because it gives you avoid, avoidance, but like the avoidance alone doesn't really keep you alive. But once you combo the, diff the, the combination of Perfect Being and Artifice Mastery, you get a really solid character. Um, now, in terms of our reward as well, around the time you're getting Artifice Mastery, you'll unlock your uber skills. Prismatic Cloak is something that reduces flat damage dealt to you, which pretty much nullifies all mobs that hit very, very, like, extremely quickly but do little damage. This pretty much cuts them off. And then I went one point into Beacon, which you'll hear here in a, a second, which calls in an airstrike. 
I don't really know how I like this skill. I don't really have the points to max it, and it doesn't seem like it scales that incredibly strong if I put more points into it. It doesn't really one-shot bosses. It does like a noticeable chunk, but puts me in a bad position. Basically, every 20 seconds, there will be an airstrike, and if you stand near the airstrike, it does a lot more damage. But it's just very gimmicky, so I don't really know how I feel about it yet. So as of now, I just got one point in it. Even for one point, it does really good. It also gives a ton of movement speed, which is super solid. So that's pretty much the character um, and what I've done in terms of leveling gear. Okay, that's going to pretty much keep on happening now. In terms of leveling gear, to explain what I did to level, is I made two spell grip, uh, two spell grip wrist blades. Uh, what spell grips are, are basically you find a wrist blade. After you find a wrist blade, you're going to put in a oil of enhancement, which you can buy at like one vendor in each act. It doesn't really cost much. That combined with two uh, crystals, arcane crystals, will create your weapon. And then you simply put your weapon with another arcane crystal and you tear it up. And that way you can get it all the way up to tier four. Previously, you had to use a rune or else the stats wouldn't carry over. That's not the case anymore. Um, so basically spell grips are really strong. In terms of damage, you want to socket it with spell damage. The reason why you want to use spell damage is subterfuge says 33% of your fire, cold, lightning, physical, magical spell damage increase your trap damage. Spell damage, the way it's calculated in Medium Excel, and I could be wrong on this, this is a source that I heard from. However, at the same time, I've tested it and it is pretty bonkers. Spell damage converts itself into these so fire, cold, lightning, and physical magical. Physical magical spell damage is not the same as spell damage, which means that you get the spell damage modifier that splits into fire, cold, lightning, and physical and magical, which then turns into trap damage, um, which is the reason why I have socketed um, spell damage into our gear. And if you actually look, this sash, the sash gives 20% spell damage. If I were to take the sash off, you'll notice that there is a slight decrease slash actual decrease into our damage here. Um, so yeah, we pretty much are going to use spell grips to level. Uh, I'm also just using Griswold's heart. You find it off Griswold. I use it in every single act. Um, Colleague gloves you can get around 40 something. They give plus two all skills. You're pretty much looking for spell damage and plus two all skills. And then you want to get a mix of, I think it's faster cast rate. It might be attack speed for the traps. I haven't really min-maxed in the sense of like, actually um, used like D2 stats to look for breakpoints. I just got things set up. I'm um, using lion or rabbit's foot for my boots. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much about it. I got a pretty crazy amulet. So with that being said, the way your stat allocation works is put in enough strength for your gear, put in enough dex for your gear, and then max vitality. The reason why I'm maxing vitality, a lot of people say it's a terrible stat. It is usually a terrible stat, however, we have a percentage scaling vitality here, Artifice Mastery, which gives us 50% to vitality. We do not have any form of defense scaling from our tree, um, and we already get block and evasion from our tree. So what are we missing? Like, like basically maximum life. So our goal is to basically stack vitality wherever we can to bunker up our health. Having more maximum health also means we heal more from our Artifice Mastery since it's based off our max health. Uh, with that being said, let me go ahead and show you guys a little bit of content. Um, like I said, I'm still progressing through... Oopsies, that's not what I meant to do. I'm still actually progressing through here. And I'm not using a mercenary yet because I find mercs to be a bit of a hassle at the beginning because they die a lot if you don't gear them. It takes me a little bit to gear them, so I'd rather just wait. So I guess we're going to go fight... Is it Durya? Is it Bale? I don't remember his name, I forgot. Our single target is not super, super good. Um, that is pretty much where our character lacks. However, to be fair, most builds don't really have the best single target. Like, usually a build lacks something. Um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing for single target later. I don't know if I'm just going to brute force it by just, like, having more damage from my skills. Or if I need to use, like, a special O skill. Um, an O skill meaning, like, a socketed skill that's granted from other equipment. Oopsies. So we're going to... Is it really all the way there? Yeah, we're going all the way there.
So I can show you why this is gimmicky, right? Like, I'd have to run all the way back here now to stand on it. It does good damage, it's just... It's very inconsistently inconsistent. I think that's a good way to describe it. Oh god. This guy, Zoltan Kola, whatever his name is, takes longer to kill than actual Duriel. So this is where you can kind of see the survivability of the character. It's pretty good. It's pretty good considering the avoidance and the dodge, which makes it really, really nice. Oh. Always remember to keep your trap on the inside here, of this little sparkly stuff. That's pretty much the uh, the damage bonus that you're getting from the, the beacon. I forgot what the trap is called. so I can pick this up. Thanks, dude. That's weird, you like can't blink in this area. Oh, I already did this. I just had to talk to What's-His-Face to go sail. Nice. Okay, so to bring you guys up to speed with the median Excel progress as well. Um, so here's a handy dandy chart. I'll link it in the comments below. I don't know if this is outdated or not, but this is basically what you use to progress through median Excel. It's kind of this this sheet actually is the reason why I play median Excel. It really gives me like the Path of Exile slash Grim Dawn vibe, but like it's in its own way of Diablo 2, you know, like with PoE, you'd have like kill act boss, you know, complete this, finish labyrinth, ascend, get your next ascension, get your third ascension, get your fourth ascension. Yeah, fourth ascension? Fourth ascension? There's three? Yeah, there's four. Oh, holy shit, I can't believe I forgot that. Um, you know, like kill shaper, kill elder, kill the guardians. Except in this one, since it's, you know, a lot smaller, they can make things a lot more broken. So basically for doing each one of these, you get a very nice reward. So we have done, for example, the 59 challenge, which is last wave portal, do Tran and Thula. Uh, that essentially gave us our sunstone of the twin seas. Then after doing that, um, we did Nightmare of Fisto, which is going to the, the Karas 3000 BA portal. Um, which gives us access to our uber skills and I think actually the class charm, which is what we're using here uh, And then after that there is the challenge to kill uh, Butcher which we killed butcher. No problem butcher is a defense check uh, Butcher I think gave us is it this one here butcher's tooth for magic find and all attributes um, Then there was the infernal machine which we cleared then there was the sunless sea which we cleared as well uh, so we are now waiting at Death Projector, which is going to be the 105 area, or sorry, which is actually Act 3 Flare Jungle. Uh, and then we're about to hit 110, which means we can come back and do all of these. 115, you have your next one, 120, 125, and then the 130s. So this is pretty much it. I've never gotten down here. I think I have done this. I have definitely done a few 125s, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I've ever done the 130. 30s before on any character but anyway that's pretty much about it hope you guys had a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves uh i'll try to bring you guys some more content tomorrow but for now i'm out hope you guys had a wonderful time remember you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox see you guys all tomorrow